Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. In this video, we'll be learning about clavicle fracture and its physiotherapy management. As an introduction, the clavicle, commonly known as the collarbone, is a long slender bone that serves as a strut or a rod that connects the shoulder blade, that's the scapula, and the sternum. The fracture of the clavicle is one of the most commonest injuries but it is most commonly seen in younger children. It is commonly fractured at the junction of its middle third and its lateral third, right about here. And the other common site of fracture is a lateral third of the clavicle as well. Looking quickly at some functions of the clavicle, it increases the arm strength mechanism. It protects the neurovascular bundle, that is the subclavian vessels and the brachial plexus that runs beneath it. It provides attachment for important shoulder muscles like the deltoid, also the pectoralis major as you can see here. It braces the shoulder back during rest and during motion. So basically since this is connecting the sternum and the scapula as well, it is providing a major function while shoulder is moving. Hence it braces the shoulder back during rest and during motion. So we have direct and indirect mechanisms of injury. Under the direct mechanism, we have fall on the point of the shoulder and also direct trauma to the clavicle due to accidents, which make up 8% of the cases. And indirect mechanism of injury is fall on outstretched hand, which makes up only 1% of the total cases. Now looking at the main sites of fracture, we have 85% at the junction of the middle and outer third, as you can see right here. 5% at the medial end, that is the end towards, towards the body, right here, that is towards the sternum. That make up 5% and 10% is at the lateral end, that is the end that is away from the body, near to the shoulder joint. So that makes up about 10% of the sites of fracture. Next, we'll have a look at the classification of the fracture clavicle. According to Allman's classification, we have group 1, group 2, and group 3. So under group 1, it is mainly the middle one-third of the shaft that's fractured. Under group 2, we have the lateral third, distal to the attachment of the coracoclavicular ligament. So I'll show you another diagram to explain group 2. And group 3 will be the medial third fractures. So in this diagram, you can see the clavicle here. This is its medial end that attaches to the sternum. And here is its lateral end. And here you can see the shoulder blade and the coracoid process. So the coracoclavicular ligament, as you all know, is the ligament that connects the coracoid process of the scapula and the clavicle. So we have the coracoclavicular ligament. So the group 2 kind of fractures that I was talking about earlier occurs in the lateral third distal to the attachment of the coracoclavicular ligament. That means away from this ligament, somewhere right here. So again, these type of fractures are subdivided into A, B and C. So in type A, we have the fracture right here and the coracoclavicular ligament is intact in this type of fracture. In type B, the coracoclavicular ligament is ruptured, so it, it's ruptured. And in type C, we have intraarticular extension into the acromioclavicular joint. Looking at the clinical features, we'll have pain, swelling, and deformity and also there will be inability to raise the shoulder. Rarely there will be pseudo paralysis of the affected arm. Now in this type of deformity we will see that the medial end that is the one near to the sternum is displaced upwards as you can see in this diagram due to the pull of the sternocleidomastoid muscle and the lateral end of the clavicle is displaced downwards due to the pull of the pectoralis major muscle and also the weight of the upper limb. Looking at the radiological features, an anteroposterior radiograph shows the fracture. It may be a crack with no displacement or as you can see here, it may be a displaced fracture 
with the outer fragment depressed and displaced medially, whereas the inner fragment is displaced upwards with overriding of the fragment. So as, it's, as you can see, it's overriding the other fragment. Now looking at the conservative treatment of the fracture of the clavicle, a cuff and collar sling is used for undisplaced fractures. This is a diagram of cuff and collar sling. Strapping is done after reduction of the fracture and a figure of eight bandage helps to retract the shoulder girdle and minimizes overlap. So as you can see here, although this is not a figure of eight bandage, but it's almost like a sling. So this kind of strapping is used to retract the shoulder, shoulder girdles and it minimizes the overlap of the fracture. Now, there is another method that's called the Billington yoke method in which plaster of Paris is applied over a well padded figure of eight dressing. Not a sling, but it's done over the dressing. Now, if we look at the treatment plan for newborn to preambulatory children, so in this we are considering small babies, symptomatic treatment will be done if there is fracture of clavicle in them. And in this, the arm will be binded to the chest of the small child. Now, in the ambulatory stage, if they are 2 to 12 years old, usually figure of 8 bandages are used. And from 12 years to maturity, commercially available figure of 8 harness is used. It somewhat looks like this. So this is what we learnt under the conservative treatment. The cuff and collar sling are used for undisplaced fractures. The figure of 8 bandage, it helps retract the shoulder girdle and minimizes overlap. The Billington yoke method is plaster of Paris over a well padded figure of eight dressing. Now under the treatment plan, newborn to preambulatory symptomatic treatment is done where the arm, uh, arm is binded to the chest. In ambulatory stage, figure, figure of eight bandages are used and from 12 years to maturity, commercially available figure of eight harness is used. So under surgical treatment, Rarely open reduction and internal fixation are needed for fracture of clavicle and they are needed in the following conditions. So mainly in open fractures, so if the skin and everything is injured and if it's like an open fracture where it can be externally visible. If there is penetration of the skin by the fracture, then surgical treatment is considered. If there is epiphyseal displacement in children, if there is a non-union in fracture, so what we mean by non-union is if any of the conservative treatment methods did not work and it resulted in a non-union, then the surgical treatment is considered. In cases of floating shoulder, that is a condition where both the scapula and the clavicle are fractured. And if there is any injury to the neurovascular bundle, just like how I said, uh, the subclavian vessels and the brachial plexus run beneath the clavicle. So if there is any injury to them, if there is exposed soft tissue interposition, if there is any localized fracture near the AC joint, the acromioclavicular joint, and also I have a small mnemonic to help you remember these points, that's the open field. So you can refer that and remember these points for the surgical treatment or what's the indications for surgical treatment. Now the different methods for internal fixation are intramedullary fixation with K wires and also rigid plate and screw fixation is used for internal fixation methods. Now some of the main complications of the fracture clavicle is neurovascular injury just as we discussed earlier immediate or delayed neurovascular injury can occur commonly affects the subclavian vessel. So here is a diagram. You can see the right subclavian artery, the right subclavian vein, and you can also have the medial cord of the brachial plexus that can be affected by the fracture of the clavicle. Now, malunion is another complication. So it can be a cosmetic problem and it rarely impairs function. So some of the problems that can be caused due to malunion are some cosmetic complaints and orthopedic complaints. There might be some patients who find it difficult to use their shoulder without fatigue, so frequent shoulder fatigue. There will be sleep problems, inability to sleep on the side of the fracture, uh, 
and also some neurological problems like thoracic outlet syndrome. So the non uh, that's malunion and talking about non-union, it's rare and requires open reduction as we discussed in the earlier slide, internal fixation and bone grafting. Now moving on to the physiotherapy management, the basic objective is to restore full range of motion for the shoulder. So in conservative treatment as we had looked at earlier, in the first three weeks of conservative management, we have to ensure the figure of eight bandage holds the scapula in a braced up position and early passive range of motion is encouraged in conservative treatment. So the period of immobilization in this figure of eight bandage or the cuff and collar brace ranges from about two to six weeks depending upon the patient's comfort and then with gradual progression from passive range of motion we move to active range of motion exercises for the shoulder. So after the initial three weeks, we can initiate small range movements. So earlier we were focusing on the passive range of motion and slowly we will increase the patient to start with active range of motion exercises with small range movements initially. And gradually we will increase the range using Cordman's pendulum exercises. So that's the one that you can see here. The client or the patient is standing with the arm facing down and just letting it um, with, the, with the force of gravity, you let it loose and ask the patient to move it to the front and to the back, to the sides and also to rotate the arm. We will also be using relaxed passive movements to reach the extremes of each range. So if the patient is lying supine, we will passively help the client to flex his or her elbow, abduct the elbow to end range. So that's relaxed passive movements. And then we have resisted exercises with dumbbells or self-resistance. So we will use the dumbbells, maybe a 1 kilo or a 0.5 kg dumbbell. And we will ask the patient to flex his shoulder or abduct his shoulder. Simple exercises or just bend the elbow, just do some biceps curls with the dumbbells and we can also give them some simple resistance band exercises so we have self resistive exercises and mobilization with band as home exercises you can see here that this client is doing banded internal rotation so you can even give this to your clients and then you can also work on some neck movements that's the cervical range of mo movement because that can actually become stiff due to the long period of immobilization so we want to work on the cervical range of motion also some scapula retraction exercises so these are some examples of scapula stabilization exercises the prone y the prone t the prone w exercises that you can give the clients as they progress and then you can also use PNF scapula patterns, so in D1 flexion, D1 extension, D2 extension, D2 flexion as the patient progresses and uh, gains better strength and mobility in their shoulder movements. So having a look at the physiotherapy management that we learned just now, looking at the main points, the basic objective is to restore full range of motions of the shoulder. In conservative treatment, we have to ensure the figure of eight bandage holds the scapula in a braced up position, avoid undue pressure on the brachial plexus, and for conservative treatment, early passive range of motion is encouraged, and the period of immobilization ranges from two to six weeks, depending upon the patient's comfort, with gradual progression from passive range of motion to full active range of motion. Any contact sports are generally prohibited for a minimum of four months. Looking at the mobilization after three weeks, we initiate with small range of motions in, in movements initially and gradually increase it using the Codman's pendulum exercise, which was shown in the earlier diagram. And we also use relaxed passive movements to reach the extremes of each range, resisted exercise with dumbbells or self-resistance or even with a resistance band. 
teaching self-resistive exercises and mobilization with the wand as home exercises. You can give them cervical range of motion exercises, scapula retraction, and you can progress to scapula PNF techniques as I showed in the diagram, and also the scapula rhythm exercises, scapula stabilization exercises, and also resistance band exercises as we saw in the earlier diagram, the internal rotation, external rotation, and rows with the resistance band. In surgical treatment, gradual mobilization starts 8 to 10 days post open reduction in internal fixation. Relaxed pendulum movements with the, within the sling is started. Pain is managed with thermotherapy or cryotherapy, which is the same in the conservative approach as well. And the physiotherapy management is similar to the conservative approach. And we progress each exercises according to the client's progress. I hope you found this video helpful. To get the notes of this video, you can click on the link given in the description below or visit my website to get the notes on clavicle fracture and its physiotherapy management and other topics of anatomy, physiology and other health science subjects. To get updates on my latest videos, click on the subscribe button. To get notifications, tap on the bell icon. Thank you for watching.